Welcome to the Smart Property Investment Show with your host, Phil Tarrant. G'day everyone, how are you going? Thanks for joining us on the podcast today. Uh, recording this on a Friday, so um, Friday's normally a good day here. It's, uh, I typically have less going on and I try and record the Smart Property Investment Show on a Friday. Yeah, you find people are in a much better mood on Friday than the rest of the week, so I get better stories coming out of it. Uh, you've been tuning in recently, you know that uh, we're trying to cover a lot of ground at the moment. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, around property markets, um, you know, post uh, Royal Commission, there's an election coming up, no one knows what's happening. I saw a piece the other day, I think it was Four Corners talking about, or maybe it was a 7.30 report on ABC talking about uh, what might happen should there be a government change uh, and there was some pretty good um, insights and analysis around a new report that came out, I think it was from SQM the impact a change in negative gearing may have uh, on property markets. So I think common sense seems to be prevailing when Bill Shorten first stood up and I think it was at Town Hall in Sydney talking about um, the way they're going to be approaching the election this year. This was back in 2016. They they were pretty adamant about uh, tinkering or changing uh, negative gearing. And I think that may, that rhetoric may soften or may have softened moving into the elections and uh, moving forward. So watch this space. But um, I think a lot of the... uh, the work and activities and uh, and regulation that was put in place to try and slow down property markets has taken a lot of effect. Uh, but there's a lot of noises around housing affordability and helping young people into houses, and I think that's all very cool. Markets sort of dictate the way prices evolve, um, and I think the opportunity for first-time buyers is being able to actually understand how they can enter the market. That might not be buying their dream home initially. It might be starting off as an investor. And there's a lot of really young, hungry, smart property buyers who are in their the younger years who are – giving away trips to Europe so they can um, make sure they can create wealth through property. And one of them is in the studio with me today, uh, Justin Picker. He's uh, he's built an impressive portfolio. He's only a young guy. Uh, he's 24, 25 years old. Justin, how are you going, mate? You well? Yeah, good. Thanks, Phil. How are you today? All right. Did you see that report around uh, this whole negative gearing and helping young people in the properties? You just sit there as a guy who's a property investor going, it's not that hard. Yeah, look- when I see those type of things, there's other ways to get in. So, you know, yeah. that's one doom and gloom aspect, but, you know, thinking outside the box or taking a different approach to it, you can certainly get started. So you've been investing in property since when? Uh, so it was about mid-2016. Um, okay. To get my first one. So, uh, so how old were you in 2016? Uh, 23. Okay. Yeah, so 23. So, yeah, 26 now. Yeah. So, yeah, it was in uh, 2016. I'd, um, I'd just come back from America, did a six-month university stint over there and mm. came back with zero dollars and I said, look, Next time I go away, I do something. I want to have some assets working for me. So that's when I uh, got to researching, had a bit of a look online, uh, went through property, and um, yeah, started to to research a bit more about that. Mm. And um, yeah, was just working kind of an entry level job, and um, had a little bit of a, a side hustle on the side, and yeah, just really saved hard for that first deposit. Yeah. Okay. What What, what were you doing in the states? Where were you? Uh, I was in Oregon. So oh, in Oregon, yeah, okay. It was really, really good. Yeah. What were you studying? <laughs> um, so I was doing communications, uh, public relations, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you, what, you just sort of did a, a year, a half a year abroad or something? Or other? Yeah, yeah, look, there was an opportunity for an exchange and I was like, look, I'm probably not going to get this opportunity again. So I took it with both hands and uh, – yeah, did a lot of subjects that were a bit, again, outside the box, a bit left field from my- uh, Very liberal course. liberal colleges over there. <laughs> yeah. like you, you probably did you know, anthropology of something or other in look, ancient somewhere or yeah, something. Yeah, look, you know? I, I studied a few things. I studied a medicinal marijuana class actually while oh, I was you? there and it still counted towards my degree. So I thought that was yeah, a bit of a laugh, but uh, I did learn a few things over there and obviously had a fantastic time. But uh, when I came back and I was like, there's no money in my account, you know, what, what am I going to do to move forward? That's so cool. Well, you know, at least you've- Gone out there and have a bit of fun. <laughs> and uh, yeah, which, which university were you at? Uh, I was uh, at Oregon State. Okay. Yeah, the That's Beavers. Big, it's, a big, Go Beavers. it's a big school, right? Yeah. It was huge. Yeah. Massive, massive. Yeah. yeah, probably, you know, the town was about. 25,000, but when they had their college football games, you know, that, that stadium, yeah, like 40,000 40, people. 40, yeah, there, yeah, you know, and it's, it was huge. So that's <laughs> cool. exciting to be right. a part of. So, so you come back and you're gone. So did you, had you graduated by then? Yeah. yeah so, okay. well, when I came back, um, I was able to graduate towards the end of the year and I was like, look, I've got two subjects. Do I go back to uni or do I get cracking and start saving some money? So okay. got into the workforce, studied a little bit and then graduated at uh, the end of 2016. Yeah. But yeah, while I was working, I was just kind of saving and trying to learn as much as I can and, and those type of things. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just kind of kind of move forward from there. What job were you doing when you were sort of? So, mate, I was uh, working in sales. I was doing business sales with Telstra. Okay. Well, yeah, knocking out, yeah, like, basically selling like door, door to door. No, 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 business to business. So, like over yeah. the phone or face to face. Yeah, um, and you were just selling like you know mobile phones, office packages, solutions. So, were you any good at it? Wasn't too bad. <laughs> Look, not too bad. So yeah. how were you paid? Like a base salary plus like incentivized yeah. with a commission? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, so yeah. pretty entry-level base and uh, and then you've got your commissions on top of that. Yeah, okay. And, um, yeah, so, so you saved all your money? 
Yeah, saved Most it. Of it. Um, yeah. You know, really just had a look at my expenses and, you know, worked out a bit of a calculator that, okay, I'm going to need this amount to get into property. Mm. You know, really worked out, okay, I can only spend this much and just really tried to limit myself and, um, you know, really try and build that up. I kind of also had a little bit of a side hustle of, um, you know, buying and selling things on Gumtree, so like okay. iPhones and Playstations and all that type of stuff. And that uh, that kind of sunk in while I was working there. So mm. I, I remember someone had an iPhone brand new for $600 and I was like, oh, that's an absolute bargain. So I bought it and then I was like, I might hold on to that. And then I was like, actually, I might just have a look at what the market's doing. And I ended up selling it for a thousand bucks. And I was like, there's 400 bucks. A game of arbitrage, buy it cheap, yeah. push it up and, and go out. And yeah. I basically have just repeated that process as well as, you know, income for the last, you know, three years. So Were you, were you living at home with your Yeah, with living folks? with my okay. um, girlfriend and her family. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, kind of pay a little bit of rent. It's a bit cheaper than, than if we were to move out. So, yeah, that and... You know, that with a combination of, you know, the income and uh, and obviously doing this on the side, you know, it yeah. certainly helps get those deposits there. How much did you need to save up in order to get into property? So I it was about 25000 I okay. used. So the initial property that I bought was 108000 It's a three-bedroom kind of like unit townhouse type of thing up we're, in Queensland okay. uh, in the Logan area. Okay. So that was a, you know, good property to get started up there mm-hmm. and, um, yeah, had a buyer's agency help me with that one. Um, which was good because, you know, I was just reading and reading and I was like, look, to really take that next step, I want to get some professional guidance. So I did that, which was good. And then, um, yeah, just kind of kept going from there. After that happened, I just got more hungry and kept doing deals. And Luckily, I won four thousand dollars on the radio, which certainly helped as well too. How, how, how'd you do that? <laughs> what was that like? A radio? Look, yeah, yeah, look, my auntie, she she loves competitions, and she just said, "Look, just enter some of these, you know, competitions." And I did, and I got a call, you know, by default, the other lady got the pers- the question wrong, and I got it right by default because she got the initial question wrong. So that helped, and I was like, "Okay, look, I'm I'm building a good base here." At to, least got a go headline, again. you know, yeah. in our, you know, <laughs> radio prize yeah. winner. <laughs> so yeah. I was like, "Okay, this is this is." Pure luck on this one, but yeah. you know. So then I just added that to the savings, and then I saved up enough, um, you know, towards the end of the year. So it was about another twenty thousand, and then yeah, bought a bought another property. It was just a two bedroom unit um, yeah. in the Morton Bay area, okay. um, so yeah, around the Caboolture mm-hmm. region, mm-hmm. and um, yeah, so that went well, and yeah, basically just kind of kept going from there. And then it was about wasn't too much longer later that. Um, I, another one that where I bought actually come up in the in the complex. So okay. I was like, okay, well. Might look at see what I can do here, and I said, Dad, look, since I'm now investing in property, I get a nice tax return now towards the end of financial year. I said, look, can I borrow a little bit of money just to to get this one in? It's pretty similar on to the basis life. that you'd give him. The, yeah, yeah, and I said, look, mate, and he said, yep, that's that's okay. You charge uh, interest on it. Yeah, <laughs> no, free loan. Look, family can be good for that. Just yeah. for that small interest free loan. So I tried not to make it too much. So this is the third property. This is the third yeah. one. Okay. Yeah. So that was a few months later. So so is that back in the place in? Uh, the Caboolture? Yeah, in okay. that region. Well, okay, yeah. like one, two better apartment. Two better, yeah, very, okay. very similar, yeah. So, yeah. but um, yeah, really entry price point, it was like 150 and that one was 153. Okay. Um, and yeah, so then I was just like, look, and I just borrow that. And then I, as soon as I got, dad gave me that, went through the process, purchased the property, got all the funds together. Mm. And then when tax time came back, you know, gave him that. And did you give it to him straight away? I did. I was yeah. like, just take it. you got to take it yeah. <laughs> before I spend it. So, yeah. and then, um, yeah, you know, it kind of went cold for a little bit because I was like, okay, you know, we're, we're doing all right. And mm. I was having a little bit of time, a little bit of a tough time getting savings and stuff like that because I um, – I'd actually done my ACL playing rugby and okay. uh, I realised that the insurance doesn't cover you for that much. So I was out of pocket a couple of grand. So my savings, you know, for that had kind of disappeared, but yeah. I did obviously want to make sure I can continue walking and, you know, enjoy life. <laughs> no. Probably pretty important. Yeah, of yeah. course, of yeah. course. Uh, and then from there, um, I thought, well, I don't really have any personal debt and, you know, this is more of a risky play, but it's, again, another outside of the box conventional option was I went and got a personal loan okay, and used that as a deposit. Okay. So, how, how, how big was your personal loan? Uh, it was 15. Okay. 15, at what sort of interest rate were you borrowing? Uh, 7.99, 7. which was pretty yeah. cheap at the time. Yeah. Um, As a personal loan. Did, yeah. you, did they know why you were borrowing the money? I did say it was for a car and those type of oh, things. Okay. Oh. I, did buy, I did buy a car. It was a cheap car. Yeah, <laughs> but, okay. uh, you know, I kind of set, left that there in my savings and stuff like that and, um, you know, obviously waited a few months. What, what was, it, was it like a fixed term um, yeah, personal fixed loan? Yeah, fixed personal okay. loan. Yeah, you still yeah. got it, so you still paid still it off. Still got right? it, yeah, yeah, yeah. So You can't pay it off quick? Like uh, yeah, like, okay. can. I'm paying okay. it off quick at the moment because yeah, yeah. what, I'm, what I'm trying to do is pay that down so then, you know, freeze up my capacity a bit and look to refinance. Um, you know, now as a broker, I can look to get a, a better rate. So okay. basically, yeah. So so you haven't um, 
you haven't refinanced any of these properties to get, get the equity back out of them. Uh, yet, or you're, at you're this about point to. in time, so I, I did use smaller deposits. So, okay. you know, there's only been one property. That, they, they've gone up a little bit in equity. So there's not a lot moment. of equity in them. No, 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 not at the moment. So I've planted the seeds, you mm-hmm. know, I've kind of looking at it and I have them on principal and interests, you know, yeah. to get a cheaper rate and, and obviously pay down some of that debt. And then I do want to look at, you know, continually paying that down. Yeah. So then I can refinance, pull out some equity and look to, look so to you go So this again. is just portfolio construction phase. You're only 26 yeah, years old, look, right? I, You're a young guy. That's exactly exactly right yeah. you know i kind of started 23 if i was 18 and you know mm. rode the sydney wave and stuff like that that would have been awesome but um as the market you know landscape has changed it's really okay where are the next opportunities and, and how can you really you know leverage into bigger and better things down the track so the f- fourth property you bought where, where was that yeah so this one was a little bit left field did this one not, um, by myself down in uh, in south australia so in the elizabeth area okay this one is about one hundred twenty-five thousand for a two-bedroom house is elizabeth where the big steelworks is is that is that Elizabeth? Yeah, yeah, so I think there was like a Holden Commodore, you know, Col- yeah, yeah, Col- Holden factory down there, down there. Yeah. and um, yeah, you know, there was some industry changes and stuff like that. But mm. um, I know the CBD of Playford are now starting to put you know more shopping centres and you know put more infrastructure in their communities. So just trying to ride that wave and yeah, look, it had a, a fresh renovation and things like that. And you know, it was sitting on the market for a while, so I negotiated it down to to one twenty five. And Gee, you're buying cheap stuff, aren't you? So yeah, like, yeah really, yeah. really cheap, and the mm. yields are good so you know all the queensland ones are about seven seven and a half eight okay. and this one here is like a 10 percent yield it's really good so so your portfolio total sort of enterprise value be about what 800 grand or something oh, like a little, little bit less than that less. Yeah, yeah a little bit less so, so four properties at 100 oh yeah okay it's yeah so 650 675 so basically yeah. the total purchase of it all is about 608 yep. um look at the moment with the current bank valuations about 655 okay with those two units of kabulcha there's been a sale in that complex for for 180 so okay. i'm looking to get that revalued if i can get it closer to that you know for both of those mm. that'll really allow me to you know unlock some equity and, and move forward there so at the moment it's about 650 650 if okay. we get it around that price, about seven hundred. But you're covering, you're carrying a lot of debt on that, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. pretty, pretty leverage, about seventy nine percent LVR. So a bit higher than than well, most. It's under eighty. You yeah, know, it's, that's it. It's, yeah, <laughs> there's been a <laughs> little bit 80. of LMI yeah. to get in, but okay. um, you know, for me, obviously, we want the the growth in the asset, but because mm. they're such high yielding properties. You know, it all covers itself really. Is it putting money in your back pocket? Is it, or is it just like pretty oh, mutually? Basically, geared? I just have one account when the money comes in, one one account when the money comes out. So is, at, is that account going neutral. up or down? Uh, it's basically it's pretty steady. Yeah, if okay. something comes up though, like you know, if a tenant leaves or something mm-hmm. like that, which re- the last twelve months have been really good. I want to touch wood. Yeah. That's uh, that nothing really will pop up there. But um, yeah, look it, at the moment, it's definitely neutral. Um, and then yeah, you get a bit of bonus back at, at tax time as well. So if you did it that way, it'd be positive. But um, yeah, from day to day, it's it's neutral. I'll just pick up uh, something you said. You spoke about LMI really quickly. Uh, mm-hmm. A lot of people might not be familiar with with what this is and how LMI, particularly for for young people. Yep. All people, but young people, um, mm-hmm. can be a bit of an enabler to, to get into the market quicker. Yeah. Can you yeah. just explain what LMI is? Yeah, so LMI is lender's mortgage insurance. Um, really, if you don't have a 20% deposit and you want to get into a property sooner, whether you're a you know, first time buyer or an investor, you can use a five or a ten or ten percent for investment now, really, to to get in, um, and you know you'll have to pay a couple of grand. So the LMI on you know these properties, you know around one fifty two hundred, is a couple of thousand. You know if you're buying a million dollars and you know it's twenty Adds thirty up. grand, you know mm-hmm. maybe it's a different story. But um, you know with those type of things and the rents that are coming back, I, I, cer- I certainly see it as a worthwhile investment, and it is tax deductible in a way as well. So yeah, it is. And the um, only problem <laughs> is is probably been you know when you're looking to you want the growth in that asset you know so i've just had to wait a little bit longer before i can kind of look to draw out some equity and get it under that 80 percent mark yeah yeah so the the lmi lenders mortgage insurance actually insures the lender not the investor that's correct so it's pretty much saying because it's a higher lvr loan um should you default it means that the lender as in the bank who's lent you the money is insured against uh, you not being able to repay that debt or any shortfall if they need to sell it or if it goes into foreclosure or whatever. So, yep. yeah. So, but, but it allows you to get in the market quicker. Well, that's exactly right. Yep. And, you know, and I mean, you know, managing the cash flows and, and stuff like that, you know, mm. it's okay. Yeah, they've let me into the into the uh, property quicker. So, you know, if I've got to pay a little bit to, in order to invest and mm. continue to build money, I suppose it's really a, a cost of getting in. It is. It's a matter of timing also in, in hot property markets and yeah. you might be able, I mean, you might have to pay – Four thousand dollars in LMI to get a uh, a ninety percent loan, but you know, in stuff that's moving quickly, that, exactly that it can right. pale in insignificance. But in markets which are slower, yep, you know, it can take some a lot lot longer to recoup that investment. But um, so you started at twenty four. You mentioned you're living with your girlfriend and their mm-hmm. parents. Um, mm-hmm. why don't you just buy a house that you could live in and mm-hmm. 
got a nice white picket fence and and pay down a mortgage over 30 years and that's your lot in life. Fantastic question, Phil. Yeah. Look, yeah, a couple of reasons for that, I suppose, is, you know, the idea of rent vesting to me is is certainly a way to go. And and obviously, you know, when I started investing, you could still have your first time owners grant, but if you're you in New South now, Wales, yeah. I've now changed that. So, you know, to me, there's no, I'm just kind of, look, let's just keep building these properties up, build them on the side, but also gives flexibility. I mean, you know, so we're 26 now, you know, we're not sure how many kids we're going to have. We're not sure what suburb we're going to be in, you know, so rather than kind of, you know, cementing ourselves into that and, you know, in New South Wales, the yields are a lot lower. But, um, you know, if we buy a house and then, you know, we've kind of you know, maxed out all of our borrowing capacity on that one house and then mm. we've got to rent it out and the yield is quite low, you know, we could be negative two, three, four hundred a week, you know, depending on, on the market and those type of things. So, yeah. you know, in terms of that, Really, anyone, if you're able to live at home or you've got cheap rent and stuff like that, it's certainly something that I'd recommend and, and build a property portfolio as well so that you've got some assets building for you in the background. But, yeah, I just think it gives flexibility. And once we've got a little bit more certainty and, and those type of things, I'll probably look to use that equity as a deposit for a house a later house, on okay. down the track. So, so, this, is, so this, this whole rhetoric or mantra around properties um, unaffordable for – Young Australians and it's impossible to get to the market. Mm -hmm. Is that just a load of BS? <laughs> Look, what's your view? Co of combination of both. I mean, yeah. Sydney and Melbourne, it can be pretty steep. I mean, you know, if you've and if you've bought something off the plan at the top of the market or something like that, you know, yeah. you, you're probably feeling it right now. And and you know, some of those aspects can't be great, but there are other opportunities elsewhere. You mm. know, Sydney and Melbourne definitely a high price point, but you know, if you live in Queensland or you live in South Australia, you know, there's a lot of value to be had down there. And um, you know, you could certainly purchase your house there and then use that to to move forward. But I suppose in your, for, for me personally, in New South Wales, in um, you know, the Sydney market doesn't really make much financial sense. But, but, so it's mindset shift. Like you know, you have gone. I want to get into property. So mm -hmm. you, you bought four properties by the time you're 26 or 27 years mm -hmm. old, right? So so you've you've highlighted you've shown the way that it can be done. Yeah. So you just need to think about things differently. If you think that oh it's imp impossible to get into a house as mm -hmm. a young person in, in Sydney because it's a million dollars, well, yeah, okay. Well, why don't you buy a house somewhere else yeah. as an investment? You know, well, that's exactly a, right. I mean, you know, if I look at the you know the the mortgage repayment, you know, someone else is paying that for me. But if I went and rented somewhere in Sydney, you know, I'm still getting a, re a return. You know, it's mm. building. You know, it's pretty much similar if you bought that you know, you're building a portfolio and you can rent and then you've got that flexibility to move around. Mm. And, you know, once, you know, if I get to say 35, 40 and there's enough equity and I've got a few more properties and they say, right, oh, we really like this house, then, okay. So we'll you're saving there. essentially working for you in property, which is going up in value. Yeah, well, that's it. Down I mean, that point in time. Yeah. Definitely, because, I mean, you know, the, the cash rate isn't doing too much. So if it's sitting in your bank account, you oh, know, you're lucky to get a percent, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just absolutely appalling. So, yeah. what, what's your family think about it? Are they supportive of this or they think you're being risky? Look, a little bit uh, at the start, a little bit skeptical, yeah. you know, just be careful, all these different type of things. And mm. yeah, you know, again, looking at it, learning and really looking at the numbers, you know, if the numbers weren't adding up and someone was trying to sell me something or it wasn't working, well, mm. I'm just, okay, well, the numbers don't add up, sorry. But uh, when, you know, looking at different opportunities and things like that, and as it's kind of, you know, grown more momentum, um, yeah, my family is certainly behind that. And um, yeah, it's good. You know, I kind of looked at, love your mum and dad, but I looked at their scenario, you know, and their superannuation, and in my opinion, there's, there's not too much there that's going to cover them when they retire. So if I can have a, a, a passive income, you know, when I'm 50, 60, that just comes in for property you're really, really old. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's a long way away for you. Yeah, you know? yeah. You know, well, I've, and it's really for anyone who's, you know, in their teens or 20s and wants to get started, I think it's really just taking that first step getting your first one under your belt and just kind of going forward from there to build that what, what about your peer group, like your mates or the boys on the rugby team? Are they, you know, they're going, oh, what are you doing? Or you oh, don't really say much, you just get on with it. It's and, a bit of both. Yeah, yeah, look, it's not something I really talk about all the mm -hmm. time, but, um, you know, if it comes up in conversation, I just tell people what I'm doing. And, um, yeah, I suppose that's why I really got into to the finance space because, you know, mm -hmm. I had a lot of people talking to me, oh, you know, I'd like to do that, I'd love to do that. And I'm like, okay, well, well, let's do it. You know, let's yeah. work out your numbers, see where you're at, and let's let's get the wheels in motion. So where do you live? Where's home for you? So I live up in uh, a suburb called Morissette. It's about okay. an hour and a half north of Sydney. Okay. Um, but I work a bit down in, in Sydney and, and, and from Not home there. as well. Yeah. Is, are you you grew up sort of that Newcastle way? I guess no, I no. I actually grew up in uh, Orange Bathurst way, mate. Okay. So, yeah, country boy from out there. How did you end up in Morrissey? <laughs> Just one of those so I, I met my partner at a uh, university in Bathurst. And, oh, uh, okay. Her folks live up this way. So You moved out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. That's it. Bathurst Uni. What did you do? Comms at Bathurst Uni? Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to be good uni for that sort of stuff. It's good fun. You've just, you've, I uh, couldn't have said it better myself, yeah. mate. You've just said it right there. It was, it was fantastic. So, you know, I look back it's on a it. It's big and, journalism school up yeah. there, isn't it? <laughs> Mate, it's great. It's, 
it's the really, pubs really in good. business. Yeah, yeah. look, it, we had a heard of a time, you know, three, three and a half years. It was certainly, um, you know, learned a lot and, yeah, it was great. Mm. Couldn't fault it at all. That's cool. And how do you manage your portfolio? Are you on the phone trying to sort stuff out or you use a, a property a oh, property manager? Mate, you've got to use yeah. a property manager. Got to use a property manager. Look, if you had to run through a contract and all that stuff, you'd just be wasting too much time. Um, you know, property management, it takes the stress out of it. If they call me, I'll get a little bit worried saying what's happened, but – you know, really they look after all the, the day-to-day issues. Um, you know, I suppose with property management, any investors out there, you know, one, I suppose, advice thing that I would probably give is um, just check on them. You know, if they give you a quote and it seems way overpriced, maybe just have a look getting a second quote or something yeah. like that. You know, I had a had a branch fall down on my property in South Australia and uh, I got quoted about 600 bucks to move this branch that you and I could chuck on the back of a ute and see you later. Yeah. So I... Called someone up on Gumtree. I said, hey, mate, I'm in New South Wales. You're in South Australia. Can you pick up this tree branch? I don't care what you do with the tree. Just get rid of it. 50 bucks, it was done. So Happy days. I was like, okay, that's great. That's just avoided, you know, that type of situation. So it's just, yeah, just kind of keeping an eye on it and, and those type of things. Mm. But, um, yeah, property management all, all the way for sure. And if anything goes wrong, they'll they'll represent you and you don't want to deal with legal battles and tribunals and stuff like oh, that. So pain in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> so, so for you then, um, so this is sort of, you know, portfolio building, construction, whatever else. Yep. Um, there's lots of ways you can frame it. And mm-hmm. uh, it sounds as though the areas that you're buying is is dictated by your ability to raise a deposit and mm-hmm. therefore how much you can borrow and what you can buy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you're, you're playing in that sort of 150, 170 up to sort of sub $200,000 space. Um, yeah. Is that where you're going to sort of stay or are you going to look oh, to, no, to change your you – Definitely know? look to, to go up, I suppose. I'll probably look at it a bit like a monopoly board there, Phil. You know, mm. you start with your old Kent Roads yeah, and those yeah, type okay. of ones and build the base. And, so when are you going to end up at Mayfair then <laughs> and, and Park Lane? Well, hopefully Mayfair will be the – Do not uh, pass go, right? <laughs> you, know, you stay out of that top yeah, we'll, left quadrant. We'll make sure the, we won't go to jail. Yeah, really, yeah. So. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know, just look to, to really kind of build those solid foundations. You know, I've got the good rental yields behind me mm. there and – Unfortunately, it would have been nice for the markets to go a little bit sooner, but I think uh, they're in good areas of growth that yeah. hopefully we'll see that, you know, and, and really, you know, if we look at statistically carrying it through a cycle, you know, if I carry it through a cycle and then the Queensland market goes up and there's equity there, you know, I'm mm-hmm. definitely going to look at um, looking at higher level, um, you know, prices above 200000 yeah. Still entry type of stuff where I'm getting a good yield. Um, well, I think you played it well um, in that being on a, a low income, hustling hard with your side hustle. And, and that's a real American term, a side hustle, right? You know, making money elsewhere, which is now sort of filtered down in Australia. But, you know, you haven't put yourself unnecessarily under undue stress by having to contribute into these properties and finding money to top up the difference between you, – you've actually got them neutrally geared. Um, yeah. And, and, and the, the, the type of properties and the um, – the value of the properties you're buying is that you're going to find that, you know, the, you're going to get reasonable yield on them because you, you're just not going to find somewhere like a hundred bucks a week to rent. No. Right? You know, there's a, <laughs> it's a base rental price and you've bought in cheap. Yeah. So if these things don't go up in value mm-hmm. this year, next year, the year, it's not too much yeah, of an issue. The fact that you are in the market, so you are ready, you're going to be part of that market story of growth mm-hmm. at a point in time. Mm-hmm. It might be five years away, but you've mentally – prepared yourself and you've mentally got yourself set for uh, having a career in property investment, right? Because yep. you're in the game, you're learning, right? So so when you get greater confidence and your capacity to learn increases, mm-hmm. you're going to be able to strike and have an advantage over other people who are still trying to get their head around it, right? You know, yeah. And that's when you can be a lot more advantageous. Yeah, definitely, mate. And, you know, as I said, it's, you know, if we hold those down, you know, hope for the, for the market to grow up as, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it happened a little bit, but, you know, we'll still want a little bit more to, to go through there. But, yeah, you, you're 100% right, you know, mm-hmm. looking to, to leverage into bigger and better things. You think so. you're saying Morrisette or are you going to move? And, oh, look, you know, it's, uh, I suppose it's the, the flexibility of not owning a property out there. You know, <laughs> we, if we, if we want to pack great. up and move, you know, we, we certainly can and yeah. there's not too many strings attached. So, Look, we'll just wait and see what uh, what my partner wants to do. You know, she's kind of supported me with the properties and stuff like that. So maybe we'll. Uh, have we'll you bought see. everything in your own name? Is that how have yeah, you structured look, it all? Yeah. Structure is certainly important. Um, mm-hmm. You know, we've we've discussed that in. Uh, you know, we'll keep the investments in my name until I kind of tap out. You know, we can put some in her name. Look at probably doing the uh, first homeowner scheme in her name, okay. uh, you know, and, uh, you know, look to leverage down the track and, and see what we can do. But, you know, ultimately, if we've got a passive income at the end of the day that comes from property, we don't have to worry about it, mm. you know, when, when we decide to retire or if, you know, we can leverage into bigger and better things. It just gives us options really at the moment. Yeah. yeah. How are you keeping yourself sort of informed, educated, growing as a property investor? Like who are you leaning on for advice? 
Oh, you, mate. <laughs> oh, I don't give any advice. You know. No, look, I'm not uh, the business giving advice. It's a disclaimer. <laughs> I just have a chat with yeah, people. No, you look, know, but uh, who, you got a good account or – Yeah, you know. so, I mean, well, now I'm, I'm mortgage broker in the finance space, so yeah. certainly learning a lot about that and, uh, you know, seeing different scenarios. It's really good, you know, talking to people – or sorry, listening to people on this show who come in and share yeah. their stories and, you know, how they structure things and what's worked or hasn't worked for them. So it's really, you know, and obviously the people I speak to are in all different scenarios. So it's, you know, really where are those opportunities that, you know, exist and you know how you can help them through that so yeah it's a whole combination of things of you know really listening to stories having a look at industry changes mm. see what's happening in marketplaces as well you know looking at that and, and really uh, relationships are the key as well so if you know people you know that can help you get in lean on you know synergy mm. you got to synergize because it's you know i couldn't have done it all myself that's for sure yeah. if I to help well, you, know, you seem you, just you seem a lot uh, wiser than your 26 years. Um, <laughs> Thanks, mate. I'll uh, take that. <laughs> it's, it's a compliment. You know, the fact that you're given a red hot go, mm. you know, it's something to be said about that. So, you know, this goes back to the point of if you're listening to this and you're in your 20s and, and your head is sort of saying, oh, it's impossible to get in the property, I'd love to, you can actually do it. Just yeah. think of things a bit differently. Yeah, that's you know, it. I mean, think differently. You know, you might be really good. You might be good at making candles. You might be mm. good at something else. You might have a bar job. You might. There might be something there that can really propel you forward. You could have heaps of stuff at home, heaps of clothes, heaps of old electronics. Mm. You know, just sell it, get rid of it on Gumtree, use that as a couple of grand base, and just build on it from there, and you know, have that on the side. So, you know, and even people who are you know entry level, and you're on entry level, um, you know, salaries, you know, 40, 50, 60 grand, anything yeah. like that. You know, just put that at, and you know, use that together and. And obviously look at your expenses, you know, if you're spending too much, okay, work out a bit of a calculator. So you've got to be responsible is what you're saying. If you want if you want something, you've actually got a plan to get it. It's it's a combination yeah. of both, yeah. yeah. Or, or look outside the box as well, you know, if if mum and dad are keen on property as well and, you know, uh, said I'd- Tap them up for a few bucks. They, they may help yeah. you get in with, if they've got their family home paid out, they could probably live, lend you some equity if that's the case. I mean, it mm. wasn't so much for me. It wasn't, I borrowed a little bit off that. It wasn't, you know, a whole deposit or anything like yeah. that. Did he make was, you sign a contract? Did he just- uh, No, nah, no, nah, uh, look, we, it was a good handshake down at the pub over a few beers so <laughs> but yeah you know it's it's really you know working out a plan you know going forward there when so. you paid him back did he take the money he did he okay did, yeah, yeah. i said dad you, i said you got to take it you got to take it a lot of parents go oh look the fact that you've gone and done that here you keep it, yeah yeah, for it, yeah no that. look it's That's um, good yeah it's, yeah he, he certainly took it back but um he was a bit reluctant to do so so oh, okay. but um you know it's one of those things that, you know, i just want to make sure that Net from this point forward, now I've got the properties in that I can mm. leverage from those, and you know we can kind of go from there down the track. Yeah, nice one. All right, Justin, thanks for coming in and yeah, having no a chat. Appreciate you're back the time. in the car, you're driving back to Morrisett. No, nah, mate, we'll um, be working in Sydney today, so okay. uh, yeah, have to get uh, get a few things going for a few clients, and we'll go from there. You got to uh, get on the road before three, otherwise <laughs> the nightmare that trip back know, up yeah, on look, Friday look, afternoon, Pacific be, Highway. We're a bit busy at the moment, so yeah. it might be a bit of a late one tonight, processing All a few right. loans and getting a few things sorted. So you um, still playing footy? No, nah, look, no. I decided, mate, after I lost, after paying for surgery, I was yeah. like, look, I do want to have a good quality of life and have a bit of money in my back pocket. So I've given up footy, but, uh, you know, there's something that, yeah, maybe down the track, but um, you're for still, now. You're still young enough. You don't want to be yeah. waking, waking up on a Sunday morning or a Monday morning feeling like. Yeah, you know, look, it was know. great. And I've loved it. I've played for the last, you know, 10, 11 years. And mm. my, my rule was if I have a big surgery or a big injury, then I'm done. And that's kind of so, what I've stuck to. It's, you know, when all the boys are still playing though and you see all that and you're like, oh, I want to go out there. But you still go watch the games though? Uh, uh, a few, no, few tins look, on the hill? Yeah, yeah. look, oh, I've kind of watched more on telly now. Yeah. There's not much sport on, so yeah, yeah, <laughs> I'll just cool. nestle in on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds all right. Nice one, Justin. Thanks, mate. Appreciate you coming in. Yeah, and no uh, Let's get you back on some point in time. You give us an update on where you are yeah, at yeah. with everything. Absolute pleasure. Thanks, Phil. Nice one. Remember to uh, check out smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. If you like what we're doing on this, the, the podcast, uh, heaps of different stories from guys like Justin uh, who are relatively new to property investing. It's showing that that uh, you younger folks can actually get in the game uh, all the way through to people who are looking to sort of um, uh, move into a retirement phase with their portfolio. Uh, we like sharing these stories. So get in touch with the team if you like to come on, have a chat. It's pretty easy, isn't it, Justin? Yeah, Nothing, look, just, no, just get in touch. Just get in touch. It's, yeah, it's editor time. at smartpropertyinvestment.com.au. We can send us a, a, um, a DM on um, uh, any of the, the social channels. Just search Smart Property HQ. You can track us down. If you like what we're doing this, press the subscribe button uh, so you'll get every new uh, podcast as we uh, release them. And if you want to make sure you're the first to know what's happening in property and property investment right across Australia every single day, you can subscribe to our morning newsletter, smartpropertyinvestment.com.au forward slash subscribe. We'll be back again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.